I like to think of travel as a practice and the more you do it, the better you get at it. And everybody finds their own way to experience what's out there. This is my 2002 F-350 ambulance. I've been working on it for the last eight months and it's completed as of yesterday. I bought it about two years ago, did a couple trips, got a feel for the layout with my wife and son. It's two wheel drive. A lot of people like to get the four wheel drive and make an overland vehicle out of them. I think mostly we'll just uh, do highways and then honestly my off-road machine is a bicycle. so. We carry those on the back, and if I need to go adventuring, I'll take the bike out there. So we'll start with the outside tour, and then we can kind of move inside and check out the lay of the land inside. We'll start with the cab, where we drive. I'm really happy. A lot of the ambulances are a van, and I wanted the truck chassis. I don't really like just the way the van seats are, and this is a little bit longer, but it's easier to work on having a full-size hood. I had a few awkward experiences at people's houses uh, where the neighbors would run up and think that the ambulance was uh, coming to pick up their neighbor. And it's like, no, 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 it's okay. It's just my ambulance. So I decided to remove the lights and that's been a good call. Got shore power. Um, I decided to keep that. We've got our propane water heater, propane tank, garbage can. This is a double vented container, so the propane can drop out the bottom and the heat from this can come out the top. Used to be the oxygen tank. This is my water system. Um, 40 something gallons of water. As far as water systems go, it's pretty unimpressive and bare bones. This one here um, used to be a full-size container and I have cut out a large portion of it uh, for interior space, but we still have this exterior area. Um, my air conditioner vents out here, so if I wanna have air conditioning, I just leave this open and I can run the AC for a few hours off of my solar system, but mostly it's there when I wanna plug in to a campground. Back here, I've got my bike rack. One of my favorite features of the ambulance and these really, really cool blinkers. I love the arrows on them. I just love some of the silly little things that they spend money on for the ambulances. Um, they just put so much time and effort into making these great vehicles. This one here is my electric cabinet. It used to be a full size, uh, but I decided to take a bunch out for the interior. I've got 400 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries. DC to DC charger, shore power charger, 50 amp solar charge controller, and 500 watts of solar power. For solar, I went with 540 watts. My calculated usage was about 200 watts, but I live in the Pacific Northwest, so I just went ahead and doubled it and then added some. This is the fun cabinet. Helmets and blocks and air compressor and tools and stuff will go in there. So that's just a exterior storage. And the last one has also been modified for interior space, but I still have a little bit left over in the bottom. So I originally got this thing and it was white with blue stripes. I decided to paint the whole thing. In retrospect, maybe not the best idea. It took at least 60 hours, but it's done and it's holding up well. I decided to go with uh, Rust-Oleum oil-based enamel paint, which seems to be preferred by a lot of the school bus conversions. Um, and it's holding up pretty well. Uh, I used a home sprayer, but most of the work was just sanding and sanding and sanding. Anyways.
This is for my son's toys. Gotta bring toys. This is our tabletop. Garbage is right here. Hold up. This is ambulance hardware. Shoe storage. Multi sport family, we like a lot of shoes. In our previous build, we didn't have any ventilation for our son's bed. For this build, I've situated his bed in a place where there's a vent and when i turn the exhaust fan on it actually draws cold air in through the vent and circulates air in his bed um, i'm really proud of that feature i've spent a lot of time bicycle traveling and my wife has joined me on a few of those trips but the introduction of our little one just seemed a bit intimidating for that type of travel we bought the ambulance after having tried a travel trailer and the ambulance really ticked a lot of boxes that we learned that we needed. We live in the Pacific Northwest, and it rains a lot. And the travel trailer, I was always concerned that there would be a new leak and that we would have rot. The ambulance is all aluminum, and it's crash tested. We intended to use it just for weekend getaways and maybe a couple shorter trips around Oregon, uh, just to make life with a baby a little bit easier. We tried getting the travel trailer and decided that it didn't work for us and went with the ambulance. They're extremely strong and all the walls are straight. The vans have curved walls and the travel trailers are mostly made of wood unless you want to buy an aluminum one, um, which was quite a bit out of our price range. I am also an avid DIYer, so this seemed like a really fun project to take on. It turned out to be a lot bigger of a project than I expected. I thought that I would be able to manage this in three or four months, and it took about eight. It was a lot of fun for me to build, but I would have to say that maybe this isn't a recommendable project for just anybody. Um, it really took a lot of time and a lot of energy. I was able to find a balance between obsessing over the details in this thing and just getting it done. This easily could have taken me two years. You watch these 10 minute YouTube videos and you think, oh man, I can do that. That looks so cool. If you're interested in traveling, then go travel. Don't build an ambulance because that's just taking time and money away from your goal. But if you want to convert a van and you like doing things like that, then that's its own journey and that's okay. I think the most difficult parts of the build were running wiring before I had anything built and kind of anticipating where I might need wiring. I also rewired all the electronic door locks, which was a feat in itself, but it's really nice before bed just to click the switch and all the doors are locked inside and out. It's about nine locks, so it's pretty nice just to have the flick of a switch. Creating a solar system from scratch uh, for my first time was also a little bit difficult. There have been a couple of highlights during the build too. Um, watching my son climb up into his bed for the first time it was really cool. He just lit up. He loves his little cave. And climbing onto our bed when we finally got it in here, he was just jumping around and loved it. Another experience that was really cool is when I finished the plumbing, I got my wife to come out here and check it out. And I turned on the sink for the first time, waited for the pump to prime, and then hot water started coming out. I didn't expect hot water to come out. 
So I finished the build yesterday and two days from now we're gonna kind of pack our bags and try and leave for a couple months and see how it works. We don't really have any plans as far as where we're gonna go but we would like to get into a little bit of sun and uh, some great places to ride bikes. We'd also like to just get our kid out and view a little bit more of the country. My intention for this build is to hold on to it for a while and just kind of appreciate my work.